This is the Change Physician, episode 225. Welcome back to the Change Physician. I am Melissa Katie, the Challenge Doctor, with my co host, Dr. Kevin Kakaro. And we started on a little off air on a little uh, conversation about something he's very excited about and, and very impressed by. Um, not just of himself, but some phenomenon of human beings. No, it's all myself. It's, I'm just very impressed with myself. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, by all means, why don't you start it off then, Kevin? <laughs> all right, so what we were talking about is um, we we're like, well, what are we going to talk about? And, and I, I had this exciting, not transformation, but for those of you who've been following the change position for, now, for a while, know that I bought a, um, a, uh, rev balance swell. It's a balance board. And I bought it back in July and it's something I've been wanting for a long time. Finally got it on the prime day sale. And it's a, uh, it's a big, it's a balance board. So it's about as long as a long, um, like one of those long board kind of, uh, long board than well, a skateboard. Yeah. They're big. And it's got the rocker on it. Right. And they have these little things and you can, what's really cool is you can adjust the rocker so you can make it either longer or shorter, or you can do it lengthwise and all this stuff. And, I've raved about it multiple times now, usually on, on Saturday, sal Saturday salutations. So again, if you guys don't know about Saturday salutations are on Facebook at Change Physician on Facebook, and you can see us there live on Saturdays. But um, it, it, it just has been blowing my mind what consistent use and like consistent, when you consistently kind of challenge your human body, the stuff that it does. Like, mm -hmm. so I've been, again, kettlebells, I've been doing that for almost two years now. And, and the, and the gains in that have just, again, it's a slow, steady thing is amazing, but this balance board, it's like, you, you know, I was watching these people do these things and they're doing like the hang 10 where they're walking on the board and putting their toes over and doing this stuff. And they're standing on one leg and I'm like, holy moly, because the first time I got on it, I, I, I used to have really good balance when I was younger. Um, I still had decent balance because we had another kind of rocker board that I was using. Once I realized my balance was kind of going. Um, but I would get on this thing and, and I would do these challenges and, um, and they were hard and obviously they would get, get better. But within the last like three weeks, it has just blown my mind. Like, cause one of the things I wanted to do, I finally took off all the guards. So there's no guards on this thing. I can spin the board and do all this stuff. But I was like, I really want to be able to walk the board. Like the surfers would do, you know, they can walk their long boards and I, and I'm like, I wanted to be able to walk up and down the board and get to the end and go back and like turn around and do all this stuff. And it was really, 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 really hard. Mm -hmm. And I would do this thing with this balance board and, and I, I do it in front of the television and watching something. Cause it just is a way to just kind of keep yourself moving instead of just being sedentary. And I would try and I'd get, you know, feel a little nervous and I'd kind of stand. I'm like, well, maybe I'm going to move the foot and it'd be a little nervous. And then all of a sudden one day, like I started taking steps and then the next day it was a lot easier taking steps. And now I feel like I'm practically dancing on this thing. Like, like I still have a long ways to go, but I can literally walk the length of the board. I can control, you know, get up to the end of the board, pull back on the board. And it, every time I'm doing it, all I'm thinking is, holy crap, humans are amazing. Like, mm -hmm. It is so amazing and how adaptable we are. I, like I'm going to be turning 50 next year. I'm, I'm literally almost less than six months away from my 50th birthday. I'm stronger than I've ever been in my life. And my balance is, is pretty close to on par it was when I was in my youth. And, it, and, it, and I'm bringing this up because so many people buy into this crap. Oh, God. Yes. That just because you're getting older, you're going to, you're going to degrade. And... Um, this biomechanical thing that everything requires to be fixed. I mean, you've seen it, I've seen it where people start getting all these orthopedic procedures, which we talked to, uh, you know, Ian Harris on, on the data, which is garbage on those things mm -hmm. and simply trusting your body and challenging your body every day in small ways. And the gains are amazing. Like you literally, if you could, if we could bottle this stuff up, like daily physical activity, we would be multi-billionaires because there's no pill or procedure on earth that does what this does. And it's, I mean, I, I, I mean, I knew it going into it, but it's just been reinforced literally every day. I'm just like, holy crap, this is amazing. Yeah. I mean, it isn't it interesting that despite the fact we're physicians, despite the fact we know this stuff, you have to go through the process yourself to really become a true believer. Like it, 
it it almost hits you upside the head. And, and if if you're not paying attention to the small changes, it can be so insidious that if you're not really looking at where you were before as to where you are now after that consistency of effort, consistency of challenges, if you don't do that, then you you may miss out on that appreciation of how amazing our bodies are. And there's there's um there's a couple of things I wanted to mention is that you know, I've always said, you know, the whole challenge doctor thing, you know, you know, challenge yourself before your health challenges you. Same kind of thing you just said. Like people just assume that you get older and you know things like you said fall apart. And well, your health's gonna challenge you because <laughs> you've not built in this this process where you're challenging your health and challenging yourself. And when you are younger, you can get away with doing a lot less or less frequently. As you get older, your resiliency may be a little bit down. Doesn't mean you have don't have the potential and ability to be there, but you've got to be more consistent with more frequency as you're older in order to maintain that. And so the problem is people drop off on that and then they start believing what they're seeing versus believing in the potential and the ability. And so um, I'm like, I'm, that's like my biggest passion I've had before I even met you, Kevin. <laughs> it's just, I'm, I think I first realized that in college more so than any, I mean, I played sports, you know, you're pushed hard, you, you know, you're going to do well, you know, whatever. But on my own, on my own initiative was at the gym. I was like one of the only girls, you know, this is back in 1992. I was in, you know, pump and learning how to pump weights, basically doing weights, watching guys um, around me. Um, but then you had to pay attention to your body and that awareness of your body. And then the mirrors aren't necessarily just for narcissistic reasons. I mean, it, it shows you how you're controlling if you're doing it right, but also it gives the feedback that, man, I'm doing something that's changing my body and it feels amazing. It could be addictive too, but I was thinking about what you said on your, your balance board. There was a term I used a lot, um, probably from a kinesiology course back in college, but um, is this kinesthetic awareness, this awareness mm -hmm. of your body's position space, like, like your knees, like there's all these receptors that if they don't get the practice or, or all the tissues, every tissue, every receptor is constantly getting input at all times, whether you realize it or not. And that frequency, like Kevin's talking about, is, you know, like those are the things that help give it different information. <laughs> it's funny, I just said that. Um, but even if I'm in pain or I'm I'm not liking where I'm at, I want to give my my body different information to change the state or the condition of my body. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. It's there's a lot of levels of understanding embedded within that comment, but you got to know where you've been at. If you don't, you got to know where you're starting. Like, don't be the idiot that goes and tries to run a marathon and you've been sitting on the couch. Like there, there's a reason that our bodies are meant to, they are slow adapters for the most part when it comes to the tissues and the information or the nervous system, like it can react quickly in some things, but when you want to make true change over time, like the adaptation of the body is phenomenal, but you have to be consistent not give up. And like I told you, Kevin, like, I want people to take away the message that you need to believe in the process. If you don't believe in yourself or your body yet, you got to understand from people that understand this concept that your body slowly adapts over time. And it could be a little faster for some than others, but you've got to be consistent and give it the input it needs to get where you want to go. And don't just because you feel good, which I just discovered that in a friend recently, but I felt so good. And I was like, wanted to do like two miles of treadmill. And I stopped and I looked at that person. I said, how much have you done on the treadmill in the last three months? Nothing. I'm like, um, you might be paying for that tomorrow. <laughs> and what happened? Excruciating pain the next day, you know? And it's just that same concept of adaptability. So anyway, I'm rambling because I love this stuff. Go no, ahead, and, I, and, I, and I think that's okay. As long as they understand that that's the, the, the the, Those are the lessons. The, the <laughs> next day, you may end up experiencing your body going, "Whoa, what is going on? This is so outside our norm." Yeah. But I, and it really comes down to you know, it's it's persistent and being patient, mm -hmm. you know, or persistently patient or patiently persistent. I'm not sure what 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 the combination would be, 
But the more that you, you, I, I you know, how can we throw those pieces together? Patient. Persistently patient and trusting the process, but you know, pulling those all together is is so fundamental. One thing I wanted to talk about, though, um, just kind of flip back to your experience as an athlete. Mm-hmm. I'm always shocked at the number of athletes who fall into this biomechanical belief, though, mm-hmm. that because they were an athlete, now they're bad. Or because I was a runner, now my knees are bad. Mm-hmm. Now, because I was a whatever, now my something was bad. The only one that I'm pretty sure may have some good correlation is say football with the head injuries and CTE and things like that. Oh, well, but sure. But even with that, I mean, um, you, you can always be better. Like, I guess that's the, the thing is people say, well, I, I used to be able to do X, Y, and Z. Are are you saying that if I do this, I'm going to be able to do X, Y, and Z again? again? And I would say, I don't know. But what I do know is if you do daily physical activity and you challenge your flexibility, balance, and strength, mm-hmm. and you're getting, you know, doing healthy activities, you're going to be better tomorrow than you were today. And if you keep getting a little bit better every single tomorrow, pretty soon you're going to be a lot better than you are right now. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just. It, um, and that's when you might be able to change your limiting beliefs. Sometimes maybe, that's maybe. what it takes. I, I, but I, I, I do think, um, man, limit, limiting beliefs are just, they're so insidious. You know, when, mm-hmm. when you look at how these beliefs start getting into somebody and um, they're so hard to get away from, like, unless, oh, yeah. unless you've experienced it. And th- this is the, this I think is a, is a key point for physicians who may be listening is like, we learn all this stuff and we learn about the capacity of the body to heal and the capacity of it. But I don't, there's a lot of physicians don't believe that. Like it, even in the, the Facebook physician groups that, that I think, I think we're both in, I, I probably hang out there more than you maybe because I just yeah. read them and see what they're saying. You would not believe how often I see a physician post something about pain and the amount of nonsense that's gets posted below it about all the stuff that they sh- should have done to them that you and I both know you shouldn't do because there's no data. In fact, there's negative, you know, data that supports that isn't actually harmful for you. And they, they pound all over this stuff because they believe in this biomechanical thing rather than trusting what they should have learned about the body's capacity to get better and adapt. Yeah. The other part, when you were talking about the process, trusting the process is um, there's a difference between knowing a thing and well, I should say as I should <laughs> understanding a thing and knowing a thing or, or vice versa. It's basically this idea of um, I'm going to pull in some philosophy here. There's this, this thing called Mary's room. Have you ever heard about this? It's a no. philosophical ex- discussion. No. And in Mary's room, um, it's this idea that Mary say if Mary was blind and she comes into a room and the room has red walls and maybe a window and it looks out to a beautiful mountain, you could describe all this stuff to Mary. Yeah. But, because, but, but can you truly say that Mary understands what it's like to be in that room? Right. And that's the, the so that the argument being is you give somebody a lot of terms and you may actually have the book knowledge, but till you've actually experienced it, you don't fully understand what the nature of the experience is. Like if I can describe red to you and I can say red is a long wavelength and it's these, these numbers, which I don't know because I don't remember that physics very well and does, does this, you may have all of the knowledge or of red, the physical characteristics of it. But that is not the same as seeing red for the first time. Yeah. And so, so much of what we're talking about here is, is, is not only having the kind of the baseline knowledge of, oh yeah, I've heard that the, the, the capacity of the body to heal. And if I do day-to-day physical activity and do this stuff until you've experienced it, it's truly, it, 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 to get that kind of fundamental belief and understanding in there is really, really difficult. And I don't think, um, people trust the process enough to do that. I mean, I just, right. or they'll deal default very quickly or they'll kind of listen to somebody else who <laughs> provides some stupid thing quick, that may- Quick fix thing. Yeah. Um, you know, people like, um, I, I, I had a patient once, uh, older woman, I think she was about 80. She used to walk like one to two miles every day. Actually, I think it was just three miles a day. And- she got her leg stuck and she fell and she broke her hip. And then once she um, 
oh god she got a hip replacement and all this stuff and then she started having she was starting to experience pain and she came in and what she ended up having was she um she actually had uh almost critical uh spinal stenosis hmm. so people don't know what uh, but spinal stenosis is is when you get down into the lumbar canal like you have your your brain then you have the spinal cord coming down and then it divides into a bunch of little nerves and those nerves kind of go down into this thing that looks like a horse's tail way 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 down into the base of your spine and over time as we get older you know your bones thicken and the joints thicken and the ligaments thicken and that space can get smaller and smaller and smaller and there's a lot of people running around with what we would call stenosis which means just kind of squeezed and constrictor um there's a lot of people running around who have really really tight areas down there because of how old they are and kind of how the ligaments hypertrophy and the bones hypertrophy and things who don't know it because they've never been MRI'd. And then once you MRI it, then they say, well, this is the reason, this is where your pain pus is oozing out of. And um, I've always, there, there's a problem with that because number one, if, if it's if it's a age-related process that's been going on for years and years and years and, and decades, again, the body's capacity to adapt is amazing. Mm -hmm. So um, for this lady, like what we should have done is just said, well, okay, you got this stuff, but your hip is fixed. What you need to do is you just need to start working in and you're over 80. So maybe instead of walking three miles a day, you're going to start with a half mile or a quarter mile or whatever. And every day you're just going to walk maybe a couple more steps and it's going to take a while, but soon you should be doing the walking that you need, right? Because she was there. There was nothing acute other than the... Um, other than than the hip issue um i i don't remember exactly everything that happened but man once the imaging started and this is back when i was doing injections and all that other stuff and we i think we started talking more about this my mechanical stuff and really started kind of you know get someone who has got critical aorta stenosis and has had it probably for years and there's no acute, you know, no acute disc herniation that's all of a sudden causing it, like an acute. I'm going to interrupt you. You said yeah. critical aortic stenosis. Oh, I'm sorry, not aortic stenosis. <laughs> critical spinal <laughs> stenosis. I think of my other, my other stenosis. Yeah. You know, the likelihood that all of a sudden overnight that's the quote unquote cause is is it makes no sense at all. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so she started doing this downward spiral, and I don't know what got involved with the orthopedic surgeon, and who knows what other things that they ended up chopping on her. Um rather than just simply trusting the process you know yeah there's nothing acute get back to doing what you need to do yeah you know you made me think of <clears throat> excuse me the um the beliefs that are really hard to change sometimes like you talked about mary's room or, or mary mary mary's room. room yeah yeah um like if she used to have vision and knows what red looks like but then you have that same person that's in the room and mary has recall she can appreciate it. She can taste it. She can see it, so to speak, in her mind's eye or whatnot. And really, really, truly, it's in the fabric of her being that she understands what that process is or that thing is. And I feel like, like you said, unless you experience it, have felt the transformation before, it's really hard to have a deep belief in that process. So it's harder to stick with it. Um, and I find, or, or whatever the reasons might not be strong enough to go through that work or whatever it is. But I was thinking about a patient I talked to yesterday and in her seventies and, you know, you always want to know an anesthesia, people's functional status, meaning their capacity for exertion, increased heart rate, blood pressure, the stresses of surgery and all of that and anesthesia. And I just was listening to all the things she does. And I was just like, you're like amazing. Like you're who I want to be when I grow up, you know, in 20 years. Um, but does an hour every morning of, um, oh, it's not Pilates. It's, um, oh, what is the name of it? They're very, very small movements. I can't believe I'm forgetting it. Very small movements that are, um, they make you start shaking. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. I did it a couple of times. Anyway, no, I'm very curious right now for this small shaky movements. Yeah. Well, actually I'm going to look it up because I'm holding it back here. I think I may have written it down. Um, there it is. Oh, bar. B -A -R -R -E. Oh, bar. The B-A-R-R-E thing? E. 
yeah, pure bar kind of thing. Um, I've done a couple of those, you know, I'm probably like a person likes to move too much, but man, it works yourself in ways you never thought it would be like that difficult anyway. So that's just one thing. And then there's biking and walking and still walks and does intermittent jogging. What I've started doing myself, right. You know, especially if I hadn't run in a while, just a minimal impact, kind of like give a different information, not always the same thing in repetition. Um, but all this stuff done. And I, I had to say, I'm like, you are like amazing. It's like, I just, I have to do that. I got to keep my muscle up and you know, it's just, and I was like, yeah, I wish I could convince my family and friends of some of this stuff. And she's like, well, I can't convince my husband, you know, <laughs> he's like seeing her doing it, you know, she's, she's like, you know, this big around and in her seventies and without any medical issues of any concern. And um, you could say, oh, it's genetics or whatever. Well, like, well that's BS. I mean, yeah, it's a part of it. It's, it, but half of the stuff, even turning on your genetics, your certain genes on and off, all this epigenetics, that's part of what you're doing in the environment you're in and all those things. So you have way more uh, power over that. I can't convince my own family our friends of some of this it's like hitting my head against the wall um <laughs> that's a, a, one of the curses is when you're running against people's beliefs and particularly if you're if you're family. a physician or expert family just doesn't listen i mean they, no. they they literally don't um you don't have as much authority as some non-family physician <laughs> non-related physician non, yeah not not yeah not a family, not a family physician. Physician. non non-family member who's a physician right yeah. and I mean, it, it is, it's, it, it just, yeah, whatever. I, I kind of just smile and nod now, but, although I but, tend to get a little frustrated every once in a while. But that's the key. So you bring up this whole thing at the balance board. The body is amazingly adaptable. And if you don't believe that and you don't trust the process, you probably will never believe that. And you are going to go downhill for the rest of your life. I hate to be that brutal about it. But if you don't embrace it, if you don't trust it, if you don't try it to change the belief that you have, because if you had the belief, I almost guarantee you, you would be doing the things of that process to keep you away from all the troubles and downhill spirals that most uh, human beings, especially in America, you know, will go down. Um, now, granted, some bad things can happen, uh, you know, you could come paralyzed or, you know, there are definitely some challenges that can make it hard, but even people who are paralyzed do more than people I know that have a full capacity body that they are making all the excuses in the world and their life is one step away from death. And yet this person who has no function of the lower part of their body is living their life to the fullest, you know, who's happier. I don't know, but functionality wise, like it depends on you and what information you give it and what you do with it. So I, I just, uh, I'm always encouraging people to challenge themselves because your body's adaptable. That is essentially all I do, whether it's mental, physical, doesn't matter. It's part of your being, it's part of your organism. And if you don't think things are influencing you, um, physical, mental, whatever, you're completely tricking yourself um, into a belief that's not supported by science. There you go. No, I totally agree. And, and, and people that believe that somehow we in medicine can fix things to better than that they were previously, that it's like, uh, uh, -uh. <laughs> I mean, unless you got some big growth, that's, you know, pushing your trachea over and causing life threatening stuff like, well, okay. then they, but you excise it. Right. And you're, yeah. you're not, and then your body heals or, and you right. let your body get better. But yeah. it's the people, I mean, I know people who get the, it, I mean, it's the ortho stuff, man, that just, it just chaps my hide. These people who get whittled on, oh, I have ankle pain. And then they, someone does something in their ankle. Oh, I have knee pain. And they dig around in their knee. We got a procedure code for that. Yeah, we got a procedure code for that. And it's like, it will <laughs> never, pain. it will never be better than it was before. Um, yeah. It's yeah. Like, I mean, and sometimes, I mean, again, in situations, sometimes it makes sense. And that is still not a reason to stop. And if you, for some reason, have some horrible orthopedic trauma, you can still be better by making sure you're doing the work. But when people actively seek out this stuff, when there's really nothing wrong other than an age-related change, 
I know, I mean, there's a lot of industry built around it, but man, it's not good for your body. So, and certainly not better than what you could do on your own with less money, probably less time, probably less pain. And probably actually the side effects would be increased cardiovascular health, probably better mental health, probably better sleep. Yep. Yeah. Like I tell my patients in, in, in the right appropriate conversation, um, I tell surgeons too, <laughs> they bring it up. If it wasn't for the body's amazing capacity to change, the ability to stop bleeding, the ability to heal, you would have no job. There would be no surgeons. You would not make the living you make. Yep. No. And I absolutely. wouldn't have a job either. <laughs> no, we wouldn't have a job, right? We, we, we wouldn't have a job. Yeah. And really, that's what, what medicine should be about is, is facilitating the body's capacity to heal. Yep. We don't fix anything. Yeah. All we really right. ultimately do, matter what we do, is facilitate the body's yep. ability to heal. Yeah. You know, I think about that even with, so say somebody has no immune system left. We can't do anything. Mm -mm. You know, I mean, that was one of the problems with, with HIV and AIDS is because when you do not have an immune system, we can't replace that immune system. Not yet. And then you can't fight off an infection. I mean, really antibiotics, all this stuff, the whole, the, the idea behind it in such a way is to allow the body to heal because either you're staving off the infection, you're keeping that bacteria in place while the body can mount an immune response for cancer. You know, basically we're trying to kill off those cancer cells in order for the body to help to heal. Um, yeah. If the, if the body, just like you said, if the body did not have the capacity to change and adapt everything we do, it doesn't matter. Yeah. We would be extinct. We would be extinct. We would. So yeah. that's a long way to say, man, the human body is an amazing thing and the brain trust yeah. it. Engage yeah. in it and just, you know, trust that process and be patient and persistent, man. Yeah. Agreed. Well, why don't you take us out then? All right. Can well, thank you. <laughs> thank you all for joining <laughs> us again on the, the change physician podcast. It's always a wonderful opportunity for me to talk about these things with my baseballs co-host, Dr. Melissa Katie, hmm. the challenge doctor herself. And we're talking about challenging in adapting the human body. Um, if you would like to challenge your brain and your mindsets, you can join us at thechangephysician.com. And until next time, stay well. Take care. <laughs>